Uh, Today this morning it is. it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have two wonderful ladies in studio with us this morning. Absolutely. Dr. Beverly Chesaram, the consultant neurosurgeon from Aga Khan University Hospital and assistant professor at Aga Khan University. And Dr. Sylvia Shitsama, consultant neurosurgeon, Thika Level 5 Hospital, lecturer at JQuat. I'm so out of breath because I'm so in awe. First of all, you've, you've already asked them all the good questions off air. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, will you be my friend? No surprises <laughs> now for us. Uh, no, no, but uh, incredible to have uh, uh, you both here this morning. I mean, it's it's ridiculous that we are like, oh, they're female neurosurgeons. That's not a new thing, is it? How many neuro- female neurosurgeons are there in Kenya? Let's start there. So Kenya has six female neurosurgeons, four are practicing in the country, and then two, one in Canada and one in the UK. Mm-hmm. Please tell me your old friends and you hang out, please. We do. We I'm, do. I'm, I'm sure that there is, I'm sure there is a closeness, but but we'll get to your thing, I, I, uh, your relationship, the two ladies here. I remember having the Deputy uh, High Commissioner of the UK in studio last year, uh, and obviously the High Commissioner and the Deputy High Commissioner are both women. And I made the comment towards the end by saying, it's just great that both the deputy commissioner and the high commissioner are women. And she's like, what's so great about that? And I felt so stupid because, Boom. you know, I was, I was I was trying to pass her a compliment. She's like, that should be normal. And and again, I think I'm sure when you tell uh, people out there uh, that you're uh, neurosurgeons, they're probably like, huh? And then they're like, oh, my God, well done. Congratulations. You know, because because you're women, which is a bizarre thing, actually. Mm-hmm. Tell, tell us a little bit about how you went into neurosurgery. Why? How? So I I initially wanted to be a lawyer. Then okay. I think my mom played a role because she bought me the Ben Carson book and that just flipped. And growing up, gender was never an issue in our home. It was just about your ability to do something. So based on your age and that's how roles were, were duties were given. And with time, when I said I was interested in surgeries, she encouraged us. She encouraged me. Yeah. And that's what that's how I've gotten here. And the steps to neurosurgery, what is that? 17,000 years <laughs> of study. So it depends where you're studying. The first thing is you have to be able to get into medical school. So what I tell the listeners, I know some of them may be at that point where th- wh- whatever you do in life, do it to your best. It open, it gives you more opportunities and more doors open. So you need to get into medical school. Then when you, need to, when you get into medical school, regardless of where you train, uh, neurosurgery has few uh, slots open. So therefore you have to be the right of the curve, meaning that you have to be above average. In, in how you perform, um, and then you need to apply. There are several programs currently in Kenya. So we've got the COSEXA training, that's the College of Surgeons of East, Central, and South Africa, uh, Southern Africa. So that c- covers 14 countries. And that gets neurosurgery train, uh, training uh, done here, as well as the University of Nairobi, which we're privileged enough is one of the training centers in Africa for under the World Federation of Neurosurgeons. So wow. it, it, you know, we've, we've got good training here. Uh, as an individual, I trained in the UK. So uh, in Kenya, the training is six years long. Uh, in the UK, it was eight years. And then after that, you have to do a fellowship. By fellowship, it means a focused time in a particular subspeciality of neurosurgery. So a neurosurgeon does everything from we see women who are pregnant whose scans, they're called anomaly scans. Maybe you're told there's something with the baby. So we, we're involved in the counseling, preparing for when the baby is born. We deal with uh, neurological problems that may require surgical solutions through your whole life up to the time when you're older. And this could be in trauma could be tumors, could be uh, epilepsy, could be functional disorders like movement disorders. Um, so it's a really wide gamut. You know, there's hydrocephalus, there's infection. As long as it's in the nervous system and there is a potential for requiring surgery, that's covered in neurosurgery. Uh, okay, so Sylvia, let me ask you, and Davina asked this uh, off air because I think we have to clear this up now. So the actual digging and cutting and opening and uh, oh. yeah, do you, do you do that? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. Yeah, it's part of your training. And then when you finish, you just, uh, you, you move to a hospital and you operate. Most of the cases we see is trauma because we have a lot so of... car accidents, yeah, things like Yeah, car accidents, motorcycle accidents, assaults. Yeah, and then 30 to 40% account for tumors, congenital problems, vascular malformations. Yes. Now, now you talk about specializing and, and, and things of that nature. Um, uh, when you say, you know, you're, you're doing the surgeries yourself, both, yes. both ladies, uh, Beverly and, and Sylvia, um, is there a specialty for a certain type of surgery? So is there a special, do you, is there a special specialist or specialization area for tumors, specialization area for head trauma, et cetera, et cetera? Or is it kind of all falling under neurosurgery? So when you're training, you have to pass through all those areas and you have to acquire the core skills in all of them. 
Um, because we're a very small community at the moment, we're about 35, 37 neurosurgeons in the country. Most of us cover most of those areas, but you can get additional training. So I've had additional training in skull base, oncology, and global surgery, where Sylvia has had extra training in skull base and spine. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So it's oncology beating brain cancer. Brain, and yeah. brain like tumors. Okay. Uh, so we, we, both, we all deal with them. And I think what happens is if you go and get an extra specialist training, I should let everybody know we are all on one WhatsApp group. Yes. So we... <laughs> can, we can, can, you, can you add us? <laughs> so all the, all the Kenyan neurosurgeons and those who are in training are in one WhatsApp group, which means if you go and learn something new, there is there's a propensity to share it. Well, that's We're cool. constantly teaching each other, and that's that's a very important part uh, of it. Don't, don't pretend that you're not sharing neurosurgeon memes, okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's not all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you've it, been spying on us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are some memes out there as well yeah. that only you would get when, uh, he, when he says when he says he has a headache. Lol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, now <laughs> I forgot what I was going to ask. You. That's actually funny. <laughs> let me uh, uh, let me ask. Uh, you are from the Aga Khan University yes. Hospital, or you're based there. Yeah. You That's you work uh, from there, Beverly. Yeah, Beverly. And uh, Sylvia, you work at Thika Level Five. Yes, hospital. it's one of our teaching hospitals for GQUAT. Okay. Yes. And w- what are the the differences in care that they can provide in the field of neurosurgery? So, um, as you know, Aga Khan is a private university and therefore it's of academic interest. As you said, I'm an associate professor, uh, assistant. Oh, ah, I'm very ambitious. <laughs> let, let not I my chair that. here. <laughs> I'm working towards it. Um, I think the differences in Aga Khan is perhaps we see less of the public trauma. I think a lot of the trauma comes from like border border riders mm. and public transport. What we do, what we are able to offer is a particularly specialist uh, service. On my way here, I was talking to the, pe- the people I was traveling with and I was saying, the care I provide is no different to the one that I provide when I was in London. Indeed, I have access to a lot of resources. So uh, we have, for example, stereotactic uh, neuro navigation. What does that mean? We have specialist uh, equipment that allows us to localize within millimeters of the brain. Uh, wow. We have um, an endovascular suite, so we're able to offer uh, coiling and other therapies. We're actually, I think, the best established, you know, south of Egypt, uh, south of Egypt and north of south uh, of south uh, South Africa. We're the best place to to do that. Um, when we look at tumors, we have a dedicated neuropathology service, and so we're able to offer much greater detail on that. We have a dedicated. Uh, um, oncology, uh, the whole the whole gamut. And if we can't offer it here, we'll tell you where to get it. But there's certainly quite a lot that I, I'm doing here that is comparable to anywhere else in the world. So in Thika, it, being a public hospital, it is resource limited. Yeah. So most of the cases we see are trauma cases, between 60 and 70% of them. And then we also see congenital malformation, and that means hydrocephalus and uh, spina bifida. And for spina bifida, mainly it's due to lack of folic acid. And this also just boils down to nutritional status mm-hmm. of the mothers and this comes due to poverty, really. Mm, mm. So we are able to address that, but we have challenges in terms of availability of ICU beds. So that also impedes our service. Uh, lack of equipment, like they're well, mm. well established. So uh, we've be, I've been running this clinic since uh, last year. And it's my hope that as we continue seeing more patients, then we'll get more facilities and we'll be able to do more and more complex cases. Because currently we are doing trauma, we are doing uh, the congenital malformations, and we are just about to start doing tumor surgeries there. Okay, yes. we'll take a quick break. When we come back, I mean, I have a, we have a number of questions. One of which is is you know how do you deal with with some of these cases? You know, some of the people you can't help or you haven't been able to help, and this must be very difficult for you as well. I always wonder what doctors do to let off steam or at least keep. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about you know a girls' night out with a few bottles of wine, <laughs> but, but to heal from 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 your trauma. You know what? When yeah. you see things that you can't control, all yeah. that coming up in just a little while. What a great conversation we have this morning.